joined by Ray Locker on the broadcast, author and political analyst on the dynamics currently underway in the United States in the wake of this assassination attempt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Locker, for joining us on CNN News 80. In my first question and the most obvious one, there was earlier the talk around Joe Biden's fitness to serve another term. There were a lot of voices within the Democrat uh, camp that were saying that Joe Biden should bow out of the entire race. And now this assassination bid against Donald Trump that seems to have rallied not just the MAGA base, but even the fence sitters in the Republican camp. Uh, I hate to ask this, but is it game over when it comes uh, to the presidential race? No, not at all. I mean, Joe Biden's had a bad last two weeks. Uh, he did not help himself in that debate on June 27th. I think a lot of people thought that he would do far better than he did. And when he didn't do very well at all, actually did terribly, people started to freak out. And so, um, you know, that's colored the last two weeks of things. Obviously, what happened Saturday has changed a lot of things. But look, Donald Trump has a habit of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. He has a way of like, letting his mouth run wild. And so if he wants to capitalize on this assassination attempt, I would say the best thing he would do to be magnanimous and conciliatory. But I don't think that's what we're going to see in Milwaukee because we haven't seen that so far. And that's just not the way that Donald Trump operates. Right. But Mr. Locker, right after the assassination attempt, the language that Trump put out was not that uh, you know, in, he was not in attack mode against the Democrats as compared to, let's say, a Marjorie Taylor Greene or the MAGA representatives inside the House, inside Congress. Uh, they have attacked, all, you know, everyone in the Democrat camp, the George Soros conspiracy theories, everything has played out uh, from their side. Uh, even the vice presidential candidates for Donald Trump, they have also lambasted the Democrats, accusing them of uh, boosting the hate rhetoric, if you will, within uh, the Democratic, uh, within the political uh, space in the United States, saying that pegging Donald Trump as an existential threat to American democracy is something that has led to this incident. Given the fact that Donald Trump has refrained from talking like that so far, do you think that he is likely to continue that and let, if you will, the MAGA dogs uh, keep barking, you know, at Joe Biden and himself stay with the chains in his hand? No, <laughs> because that's not what he's done mm -hmm. in the last nine years. He's been a presidential candidate, president or a former president. He starts out kind of softly and then he can't help himself. And so he's going to be in a room or an arena filled with partisans who are rapidly supporting him, which is what you want at a political convention. And he's going to go over the top like he has time and time again. And I think a lot of people on the Republican side who talk about things since the you know tragedy on uh, Saturday afternoon think that we have amnesia. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've watched this for a long time. And... You know, it starts out one way and inevitably goes back to the way he's always been. And so I would be stunned if he was magnanimous and conciliatory from now until November 5th. I don't think that's the way he operates. Right. But don't you see a big difference in both the camps? Uh, there is a level of discontent inside the Democratic camp, given the fact that Joe Biden had that disastrous performance uh, in the first debate. And also so many questions, you know, about his age, about his fitness to serve another term. And now in the mm -hmm. wake of this assassination attempt, you have this kind of unified stand in the Republican camp. The MAGA base has really been charged up. And any fence sitter who was wearing red, uh, either they've gone completely silent, all the, all the, you know, the Cheneys as well as the Adam Kissingers, they've gone completely silent in the wake of this assassination attempt. And while... Many fence sitters have also joined the MAGA base when it comes to the tone and tenor of their rhetoric. Even if we look at the swing states, Donald Trump out of key seven swing states, he holds the edge in five swing states, which is something that decides who becomes the president of the United States, given the electoral college system. So don't you feel right. that politically there is, you know, dismay in the Democratic camp because of Joe Biden's, uh, uh, you know, supposed fitness to serve? And then there is such a unified stand in the Republican camp, which can power Donald Trump to win another term. And even 
for that matter, steal both the Congress as well as the Senate? Well, I think things look better for him today than they did Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think all the polls show that Joe Biden is trailing. Some of them actually show him ahead nationally. Yeah, I've seen those swing state polls and they don't look good for the president. Mm -hmm. And I think people are justifiably concerned about them. You know, I don't think anybody should look at a poll and say, oh, I don't believe it because there were a reflection of something going on in the population at a given time. Now, that said, they're not always accurate, you know, and this is July. I remember in 1988, um, Pre Vice President George H.W. Bush was 17 points behind in a Gallup poll nationally, and it looked like he had no chance at all, and he won by 10 percentage points in the popular vote against Democrat Mike Dukakis. So a lot of things get, I mean, 1992, people thought Bill Clinton was washed up and that Ross Perot and uh, President Bush would beat him and he'd finished third and he ended up winning. So, and we've all remember seeing the pictures of Harry Truman on election night in 1948, holding up the Chicago Tribune that says Dewey defeats Truman. People thought that he had no chance. So, I mean, I know that a lot of Democrats are saying, don't write off Joe Biden, and I'm not trying to parrot what they say, mm -hmm. but history shows that a lot of, look, people thought Narendra Modi and BJP were going to clean up in the recent Indian elections, and it didn't turn out that way. So you have a perfect example in your country of what can happen. Right. But, you know, people but, change, things things change. So right, right. But Mr. I would, would, Mr. I would rather be a Republican right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would, because... They have momentum, but that doesn't mean that it lasts forever. Right, but Mr. Locker, the difference is that we don't have this strange electoral college system where a right. particular set of states decide who uh, you know retains power or gets a power at the center. We just go by the popular vote, and you know you saw that election where Hillary Clinton got more than three got three million more votes than Donald Trump. Still, Donald Trump became president at the end of the day. So that. Uh, electoral college system. I don't know why it still operates in the United States, but uh, that is something that we don't have here. Secondly, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, the BJP itself got more seats than all the opposition parties combined. So he right. was he was in pole position uh, to become the the prime minister for the third term. But let's talk about the other uh, indicators which are coming in uh, for Joe Biden. Among the youth, first time voters, his support has dipped. The strangest thing that I have seen is that African-American voters, uh, the support for Donald Trump has gone up to 20%. And the, and the African-American vote has been the key backbone of the Democratic Party. They've been the key mobilizers, especially in the swing states against the Republicans. Isn't that a cause for concern? Everything is a cause for concern. I mean, if you look at those numbers and say, oh, it's no big deal, then you're fooling yourself. <laughs> I don't, you know, what a poll shows now isn't necessarily what happens when it comes to the election. But if I'm losing support among my key voter block, I would be very worried. And I think you, what you've seen is Vice President Harris going to places where there are large concentrations of African American voters and reaching out to them. I think their advertising campaigns is, are targeted at those voter blocks. But if you're losing support, you know, and polls are showing that, that's not a good thing. Um, and so, you know, if I'm in the president's camp and working on the Biden campaign, I would be deeply concerned. Now, I don't think that, you know, what we see today necessarily is an indicator of what happens in November, but, you know, it's something that you got to monitor. And if you ignore it, you do so at your own peril. Right.